Hey folks. Hey. Ritesh. Hi, Todi. Ritesh. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I told you, I just added uh, one topic item uh, into the agenda. It's about the website and the documentation. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the current uh, we are working is that we can add the, uh, uh, the topics by ourselves before the meeting. Then we can work through the items during the meeting. Hey, hey, Tori. Hey, Patrick. Hey, Pritish. Hello. Hey, Wani. Hi. Hey, Hi everyone. Good day. Hi. Hi, Femin. Good day, Pradesh. Hey, Femin. Hey, Shiva. Good morning, right, for you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you. Good morning and good afternoon. <laughs> good. Is there anyone uh, to join E or we can start? Uh, I think from our side, yeah, we are all here. Okay. From our side, we are okay. Pritesh is going to be the tech. Yeah, he's going to. Yeah. We can start okay. off the from the agenda. Uh, yes. he, the thing is the meeting uh, owner, the meeting invite owner for this meeting is Steve. So in our all our calendars, it's 8 p.m. still. So my question for you is, is anybody going to change that and send uh, a revised invite? Yeah, for, for that so, uh, meeting request, I think I need to, uh, I need to talk to Steve to ask him to maybe uh, change the schedule. Okay. Yeah, I, I need to yeah, do that later. Because I, I think uh, Steve is traveling last uh, week and mm -hmm. uh, be there with some conference. Yeah, I, I think I can do that this week. Okay. Okay. And uh, next thing is about 186 story, story number 186. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. this item, uh, this agenda item is added by me. Um, currently, this 186 is the last PR for the verification interface. And currently, we still have some, uh, I think, uh, some implementation details not uh, aligned between uh, Maxdoc and the AWS. And we mm -hmm. already created the two issues to track it. So my proposal is that since we are all aligned with the interface, that means the ratifier can start to use the API. Uh, how about we uh, merge, approve and merge uh, 186. And so that the ratifier can start to use uh, the a API interface. And from our side, we can track those uh, Two issues, two, two, two zero one and, and one ninety seven. Okay. Yes. Yeah. For okay. for the, it, it doesn't mean that we we won't do it. It just means that we can merge those, merge one yeah. and six firstly to unblock right yeah. by. Yeah. Yeah. I see that 
uh, 201 is uh, milestone is RC1. Uh, I'm not sharing the screen so that we can easily discuss. Yeah, we can talk about that later. Pritesh, do you have any concerns with that? And I think it was reviewed by Rakesh, right? I wasn't reviewing that. Yeah. But yes, I think uh, just the thing is like uh, if ratify is not if yeah. ratify is not using relying on default options, then yes, we can go ahead and merge the change. Like uh, if if everything is if there is no out, outstanding issues apart from these two issues, then yeah. Okay, yeah, Rakesh was fine too with that D, e, so we can continue with that. Okay, so yeah, so that means we we need one. Uh, approval from your side, maybe Pritesh or Rakesh for this one uh, 86. Then later we can focus on the other issues. Uh, and we also have uh, one issue for sign interface and one issue for the debug interface. Uh, I think after one uh, 86 are merged, uh, the sign interface and the, the debug interface, those two PRs that uh, uh, Pritesh and Rakesh can start to re review them. Okay. Okay. We can move to the next one. Pritesh, you want to take it up? The fallback support? A couple of questions around that. How will fallback work? So like I did write the OCI specification. They talk about presence or absence of reference API to decide on fallback. But here we are saying that we will do a fallback if a registry doesn't support artifact manifest. How will we decide on that? Like how will you come to know that whether the registry supports an artifact manifest or not? So in the previous discussion, if I can interfere, uh, Yi and Pratesh, we discussed that application should handle that fallback to the image artifact, uh, sorry, image manifest, if the artifact manifest is not being supported by ORS. And, and uh, here, not ORS. here, the application is notation. So Correct. we need to decide on that. Correct. Yeah. And it should be a seamless fallback, no error in the front end for the user, but because the fallback happened from the application side, we should log somewhere that this happened kind of thing. Uh, this is what the latest uh, discussion happened in the community call about the fallback, but uh, yeah, we can decide on that. Go ahead. Yeah, I wonder how it will decide. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, sorry, Pritesh. Please go ahead, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, actually, this is about the uh, signa uh, signature format that is spec, right? Previously, it was uh, the ORAS artifact spec. Uh, currently, we have the OCI artifact manifest spec uh, approved and merged uh, in the OCI spec. So notation should use the OCI artifact manifest to store the signature into the registry. So this is about the signature format. And actually, there's uh, uh, also some updates uh, in the OCI distribution that mentioned the referrals APIs. That uh, APIs actually uh, is not, uh, I mean, uh, I wouldn't say it is not related to the signature format, but it's mainly for how user can discover the uh, referrals associated with the, uh, for example, image or other artifacts. So, so it's a, it's a different. However, uh, in the spec, uh, OCI spec, it uh, uh, didn't mention uh, that uh, how can we make a decision or how can we determine that uh, a registry doesn't support OCI artifact manifest because this manifest is uh, is the latest release. Not all the registry implement this uh, latest uh, stack. Sorry, latest stack. So that means there will be registry that uh, 
uh, doesn't support OCI artifact manifest. So if that is the case, notation, once notation push the signature uh, in OCI artifact next, there will be a failure. Yes, if the failure can be because of multiple region, reasons, how do we know that it's not because of uh, actually not supported? For example, the failure can be, let's say, a network failure, or it can be a transient issue on service side. Because I do, I do see that for FRS API, they, they rely on a particular status code thrown by registry. But uh, yeah, for this, uh, I, I can say something firstly, and uh, Shui, you can comment later. So currently, how how do we determine that the registry uh, doesn't support the OCI artifact manifest? It is based on the response code. Once uh, for us, uh, after we push in this uh, OCI artifact map, the response code is 400. And also, we also uh, need to check the error, error code, for example, not to support it or uh, invalid the manifest. This is the current uh, logic, at least for yeah. now, used, used by the by the ORAS project. Yeah, is there any standardization around that? That the registry should return a particular error message, a particular response code for, and man, if 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 a client tries to push an invalid manifest. Uh, I think um, Sajay said that we receive a 404 error, but 404 uh, error may be common across data collection and scenarios, right? It's not isolated to the failure. It's, it's, a, it's a 404 with a, with, a, uh, with a not name found error. That's how oh, you okay. determine it. So it's a substatus code that you can check. Uh, okay. I think it's, it's uh, she is aware of this one. So yeah, mm -hmm. uh, wait, wait a second. So I think you are confusing with the refer API and the artifact manifest. So we're talking about the OC artifact manifest, not the refer API. Correct. So, for, uh, yeah, go ahead. For FS API, I did saw that there's a particular return code, status code, which we are, which, which has been described in the specification, but not about this fallback. Uh, I think there are two fallbacks we are talking about. One is if reference API is not present, which is different. When the second one is when registry itself doesn't support artifact manifest, right? And Pritesh, you are talking about the second scenario. You're not talking about the first I'm, scenario. That's what yep, Shiva is yep. asking. Yeah, Shiva, go ahead, Shiva. Uh, it's on the second scenario, which is about the failure of the OCI artifact manifest. Yes, for, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So for the uh, failure of the uh, refer API, it's okay because it's uh, it's fully specified in spec. So all we need is to follow the spec. That's it, yeah, that's it. Um, for the uh, uh, OCI artifact manifest, uh, the problem we have is that not all registries uh, support OCI artifact manifest. Uh, if we only support OCI artifact manifest, that means we cannot put uh, uh, signatures onto existing registries. Uh, for example, ACR, we cannot put, put uh, manifest and uh, the signatures to the ACR. Uh, that's a problem, right? So to resolve it, uh, and to uh, support the, the existing uh, registries. Uh, here we are proposing uh, the fallback of the uh, OCI artifact manifest to the OCI image manifest. But we should always use the OCI artifact manifest if available. So, but how to determine it's available is a challenge. Uh, so uh, currently in the ORA CI, what we do is that we first put a uh, OCI artifact manifest to the registry, see if it's uh, accepted by server, but how to determine it is a, it's a challenge. Currently, we are uh, determining it by if we are receiving a 400 uh, battle request uh, error and uh, it returns a, uh, a, a, a formatted error that return, uh, the error, where the error code should be um, manifest invalid. Uh, however, uh, not all registries returns the manifest inv invalid. Uh, we have 
discussed with Nima uh, from the ECR team. Uh, the ECR uh, seems to return a uh, unsupported uh, error code instead of the manifest invalid code. Uh, so to handle that, uh, in our CI currently we are doing something like this. If we uh, put a valid uh, OCI artifact manifest, but received a 400 uh, error code with the internal error code is manifest invalid or unsupported, then we think it's uh, that the, re the remote register does not support the OCI artifact manifest. And then we will try to compose a OCI image manifest and push the OCI image manifest. Um, however, uh, the OCI image manifest has a, a extra field called config. So we need to decide uh, what's in the config uh, in this meeting. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, okay, good, good question. Like, yeah, we know that we, did, we figured it out for ECR, we figured out this for Asia. Uh, how about other registry like Docker Hub? Can they return a different response code? How about JFrog or Artifactory or any other registry? I mean, are we going to test with that and figure out what error messages do they return? <clears throat> and I think Toddy has his hand raised for quite some time now. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I um, just wanted to ask Shiva just for my qualification. So in both cases, we receive 400 as uh, response back, right? Just in the message inside the 400 response, we can see uh, uh, the two different uh, codes. One is uh, unsupported, the other one is uh, invalid manifest. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Should be is it 400 or 404? Uh, it it's 400 for the manifest yeah. code. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So it will be good to add this to the specification as Pritesh uh, mentioned, but uh, that is a little bit unreliable because different, like, there is no standard what is in the message, right? Uh, if we base only on the, the error code, which is the 400, are there other cases where this can come in as, as a message? Uh, okay, so this concern is valid. Uh, we don't have a standard and this uh, is a, just a best guess. So there's no guarantee that if uh, we receive this, it implies that the uh, artifact manifest is not supported. So yeah, so that's why we need to discuss. <laughs> Okay, and the uh, additional thing that we need to document is the additional field in the image manifest for OCI that we need to populate when the artifact manifest is not supported. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Uh, the image manifest has an extra field called config. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think we can. Do we want to discuss the first option, like artifact manifest fallback, or do we want to table the discussion for some time later and we can move on to deciding what should be the config field of image manifest? Since this is, uh, is this in scope for RC1, the fallback itself? It should be, correct? Yeah, I, I think so. It should be, otherwise, uh, once notation uh, use the OCI artifact master uh, manifest, uh, we, we cannot push uh, signatures for, for some other registry. Right, right. So I think uh, we should be able to discuss pretty. So uh, a question, Bunny. Uh, are we all in agreement that this should be part of RC1? And uh, what will be the impact on RC1 if we include it in RC1? Because um, with RC1 is what goes the OCI spec, right? We are not going to go through the ORAS artifact as well, right? So if it is not, if it is any other registry that is not OCI compliant, 
or if it is anything that is not, uh, you know, artifact manifest complaint, then how do we, uh, you know, state that in the RC1 blog, right? Is it, so how do we project that to our customers or users, right? Yeah, so what uh, uh, Sachi is posting is that support non-ORAS registry was not part of RC1. So my question is, can we pun this to RC2 and get like, we can release RC1 and we can move this to RC2 and provide this fallback support in RC2. Okay, sorry, I was not aware of that. So yeah, if that is the case, then yeah, I'm fine with that. So Pratesh, uh, Shibay. Yeah, I agree. Let's okay. move it to post RC1 or RC2. Okay. Because we, sure. they, they yeah, are still open. Us... Uh, go ahead, Pratesh, sorry. I mean, there are still open items here which we needed to discuss to figure out the path forward. So like, exactly. it will give us some time to discuss that and find out the uh, good solution for this. Right. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so that means uh, once we have RC1 out, uh, notation can only push the signatures to uh, ACR or ECR, right? And 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 I think maybe ZOT. But uh, any other stream which will support uh, the uh, artifact manifest. Uh, yep. Yeah. And we can have a fallback as an additive option in next release. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maybe we can, uh, uh, yeah, just reply to each question. Maybe you can ask you one is only support or as artifacts back uh, compliant registry. Is that uh, exact, exactly? It's, uh, I think that's not that accurate uh, because ORAS is uh, moving to, uh, is lifting to the OCI artifact uh, manifest and this uh, reference API, right? So uh, I think uh, in normal case, the registry that support ORAS artifact manifests will move to the OCI artifact uh, manifest, but uh, but it is not our, uh, it is what we can control that, right? So at least for now, we know that ACR and ACR are going to support it. And also from the community, uh, it seems the ZOT registry also support it. But for the others, it could be or not. We, we don't know. Okay, understand. That's that's true, yeah. So for RC1, we will say only the service support artifact type will be supported for, and for next release, we can add the support for fallback support. Okay. Okay, then for RC1, for the signature spec, because I'm currently working on that, I will firstly remove the OCI image manifest part. We we only update uh, the ORAS artifact uh, manifest to the OCI artifact manifest. And in RC2, we can, uh, once we have alignment, we can start to update the spec. Okay? Yeah, that sounds good, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Pritesh. So we are down for the third item, right? Potential RC1 issues. Uh, uh, you want to take up, uh, Pratesh, the 190? Yeah, the first, the, the the first one. Okay. Uh, do we want, I think it's not much work. We are anyway pushing. So <clears throat> uh, I want to bring it to RC1 because it's not a much work. Uh, anyway, we are create, creating these annotations when we are pushing the signatures. So when we are verifying, we can just filter on based on based on that. I'm not sure why we haven't implemented this. 
देखो कि बड़ा इशू वन नाइनटी वन So like it will help us and provide some cushion for timeouts. If they are like if there are more signatures, we don't have to pull individual signatures. The first one, yeah. This one. Yeah, yes, this is the one. So right now we are not using signature filtering. We do have a specific section for that. In specification, we are doing only for signature push, but not for pull. So it would be great if we can do it for pull also. You you mean pulling the signature? So like when we pull, the, so when when we call the reference API, it will provide us with bunch of. Uh, descriptors and in the descriptor we'll have and no, so it will probably be the descriptors to uh, artifact manifest. Artifact manifest will have annotations and based on annotations, we can decide whether we want to pull the signature blob or not. So this will help us to avoid. So like if we are not interested, for example, let's say. <clears throat> Uh, multiple organizations are signing a sing um, an image, and I am only interested in the uh, signatures which are from my organization. So basically, I would be I should be able to filter. So I I don't need to actually analyze all the signatures. I would be able to filter it just by looking at certificate it's signed with, and I can just only look into the signature which which I would be interested in, and it will help us with the seven seconds or five seconds timeout which we have for OPA or anything else. So for sign operation, we are already doing this stuff. We are already calculating the digest of thumbprints of certificates and putting them in annotation, but doing verify, we are not actually utilizing that information to filter the signatures. Mm. And I remember uh, there is a signature filtering start you the story, but not but that one not planned in RC1 yet. Yeah, do we want to pull into RC one because it should not be more than one or two day effort? It should then, be one day uh, effort. Then, okay. With this, right, Pratesh? If it is not filtering, then this is also related to the timeout, isn't it? Because if your first yes. few signatures are belongs to some other, uh, you know, stakeholder, then uh, it might take longer time to go like fiftieth signature or something like that. Yes, Probably it might. Both are interdependent, right? Yeah, it might provide some cushion there. Yes, that's correct. Exactly. Yeah. It's a kind of not everyday scenario after first release, probably RC1, but it can, we can end up there, you know, not knowing uh, how it's going to progress. It's uh, not like first shot solution. It will just provide some cushion there for verification. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think this uh, filtering is good. I'm just uh, uh, the first thing is about uh, uh, the scenario uh, that uh, Pradesh just uh, described uh, one scenario. There could be other scenarios. Uh, the second one is I'm not sure we have uh, the capacity that uh, implement this because this also requires some some. Uh, user uh, UX related changes, right? And also, uh, no, um, there should not be there should no, not be any back, UX changes. Correct. It's a background filtering that happens, isn't it? After you yeah. get the, it's the well, verification, right? UX should not change for this. It's in the implementation on the. Yeah. Services. So if you open the com hyperlink to the comment there, it calls out the specific place where we need to make the change. Uh, yeah, this one. Okay. So this is where we uh, actually need to make the change. So, so you mean that uh, during replication we will pull signatures, right? So with the filtering, I think it is the specific filtering that the filtering only the notary signatures, right? Uh, uh, no, this is filtering in in, in notary signature. It's filters based on the certificates we are interested in. So for example, so, 
if you are, let's say you are pushing 10 signatures with your certificate, I am pushing 10 signatures with my certificate, okay? And there are, let's say now 20 signatures with two different kind of certificate. When I am verifying the signature, I would have put the trust store as my certificate, right? My root. So what will this will do is it will just it will only down it will download only the images which contains my trust store as one of the certificates in the certificate chain. Okay, so it, it, it won't even down mm. it won't even download your signature and verify it and just say that okay, I downloaded a signature, verify it, but it doesn't belong to this trust store. So yeah. Okay. Uh, and and this is the default behavior. Only in the signature yeah. we are. Interested. Yes, this is default. Yeah. I, I think, so, uh, Pratesh, this is even before you go to a valid signature when you actually filter it and. Uh, yes. You form that. We perform, when, yeah, we perform filtering based on annotations in signature artifact manifest or signature manifest, whatever you call it. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, how about other signatures? Is there any case that we also need to verify it? But uh, if by default it uh, is filled out, then we so cannot I... verify it anymore. Sajay, Sajay has his hand up, so he might have something to say. So uh, I, I think Yi's question is also valid because uh, are we calling out that we are not going to filter for this? Version is that what we are doing? Parse you one, or are the we call including out, the, the, the call out is it's good to have filtering in RC one because uh, it's not so much I'm, no. The, right? Just correct the, the call out is we are missing that feature. We are putting we are pushing this information for filtering in doing sign operation, but we are not utilizing it in doing verify operation. It's a missing feature. Okay. Okay. No, I understand. I understand. We had, you yeah. had the similar conversation in Ratify also. What happens if somebody has like 50 signatures? I, I don't think for RC1 that should be the bar. We should probably have, we can val validate a, a, a small set of signatures and that should be good enough to get people unblocked. And if they have like hundreds of things, signatures, we can ask them to prune it uh, as a guidance if needed. So uh, we valid, we actually tested out with a, with a large number of signatures and large number of attachments, but it gets really... Uh, difficult when you have like a like a large cluster deploying things with so many pods and so many signatures and whatnot. So um, I think maybe so, having a so, recommendation might be better. So yeah, so we're just fine saying we will just bind this missing feature to our post RC one. Cool. Let's do yeah. that. Uh, uh, yes, I think so because implement here it will require like one to two weeks. So that's a long time. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, so, I have one question for Sajay. Uh, Sajay, you said that you verified the signatures where you had large number of signatures in the registry. Uh, yeah. So we did a bunch of tests on the ratify side of uh, mm -hmm. pulling a large number of. It wasn't signatures, but basically having a a, a large number of responses from referrers. Or I, if I remember correctly, it was a, a set of pods. Like there are multiple met matrices on this, right? You can have large number of pods, each pod has its own signature or each image has its own signature, or you have one artifact with the last number of signatures, both are pivots here. So uh, I think the, the scoping here is, um, there are many edge cases that we can hit in RC1, we'll probably identify what the use cases are and we'll optimize along the way. That's what we wanted to do. So call out the fact that Yes, we're not going to support 10,000 signatures. It does just doesn't make sense. Uh, or maybe something of that order would be good enough. Some SLAs, okay. are, no guarantees per se, but SLAs at least. Sure, sure. So the other thing is the the next one is Pratesh uh, uh, is about the uh, plugin request not does not have the expiry in it. So basically, when we when for we have two types of plugin. One is envelope generator, and one is signature generator. In envelope generator, we never pass the expiry information to the plugin. So plugin doesn't can't honor the expiry. So I think we should pull this into R C one because it will require specific changes for any plugin writers. 
And we also need to make the implementation change for this. So if you see here, the request object only contains payload, plugin config, contract information. There is no information about the expiry, which is always specified during command line invocation. So there would be two tasks here. One is to update the specification to somehow pass the expiry to the request. And the second would be to update the notation implementation there. And I'm just assuming this should be part of RC1 since this is specification change and plugin change. Any comments or feedback? Sajay Shive E. Tariq. Did this come up when you tried to implement the plugin? Is that what happened? Yes, basically, yeah, when I try to plug in, we cannot just honor the expiry. And it's like you will have to assume that basically there is no expiry for this plugin implementation. You mean the wait, hold on. This is the expiry for the signature, right? Yep. So basically signature expiry is passed by command line interface CLI, right? Like notation yeah. sign hyphen hyphen expiry one day or whatever we do it. That is one day information needs to be passed to plugin. Right. And we are not doing that right now. Okay, so it's a it's a minor modification to add more data for the plugin, yep. right? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. and the implementation and implementation also to pass that information. This is a plumbing work. Uh, so basically, it lacks uh, passing all the signing. Uh, I mean, all the sign options to it. Sign options. Yes, uh, all signing for all sign options, including the expiry. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever user can provide feedback on, like whatever user input we have, we have to pass that basically, yes. Yeah, I have no concerns. Cool. So this means we need to update the spec, right? And also there will be changes in uh, notation side and also this also requires some changes from plugin side. Yeah, Samir has his hand on. Um, Samir? Yeah, just jamming in on this topic, right? Why can't it be a change in RC2 and it will just be a new enhancement, a new command option added in RC2 versus trying to do something in RC1? Because if customers use expiry, the plugin can't honor it. With the functionality, no, we... we say that their signature expiry exists. No, There's no I... way to... No, no. I see what you're saying, but we just don't let that option be available in CI between in CLI and in RC1. Yeah, just, I think somebody's some just trying to scope it down to can we add this because there's nothing breaking, it's just editive, right? And just scope it to basically can we keep the train running on time with shipping <laughs> RC1? Yeah. And uh, yeah, so what I'm thinking, uh, Pratesh, help me understand, right? So it will not be controlled through CLI. Plugins can use a default mechanism if they want to for RC1. We are not stopping them. And when RC2 or RC3 rolls around, we add a new sub option in the CLI sign command. Say, now you can pass an expiry. And if you do, and if your plugin version supports a new version, then that will work. Yes. Yeah, so you're saying basically restrict whenever someone uses plugin yeah. to sign, don't even. I allow them to specify expiry in CLI? For right now, yeah, for RC1. And then in RC2, we add, we add it in. I'm trying to get RC1 out released on 11.28 as the date we all are marching towards. <laughs> so right. I'm not sure if it's doable because we only want to do it for one plugin type, not for other one. Hmm. Yeah. I okay. think that's where it gets complicated. If it is, if it is taken out from the CLI 
not targeted to a plugin type, right? Sorry if I'm missing anything. I'm just oh, so you just saying completely take out the expiry feature in itself. No, 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 not signature expiry. What I'm saying is, we this is a good feature. Customers have given us feedback that this is something they care about. Now, what I'm saying is, instead of it being a configurable value from the CLI, can it be a fixed value done by the plugin automatically for RC1? And in RC2, we add it via CLI command saying, now when you sign, you can pass this optional parameter and that optional parameter will then be passed to the plugin and let the plugin pass it to wherever it needs to. I mean, it would be confusing for plugin owners to implement anything. Like initially, it is passed. It was like even for user experience perspective, initially it was default value. Even if I pass that flag, okay. Now, even I have passed the flag, now suddenly it changed and you start enforcing that value. No, I'm saying don't even offer the flag initially. The flag is not even op an option on day one. On RC1. Yeah, and, and for that, we need to determine a kind of plugin with this. Determine the kind of plugin with this. For, for example, RC2 signature path. generator. Yeah. We can. We need to support this. That that we can support this expiry field for envelope generator. It cannot. So it's like you have to determine the kind of plugin. So it's not that easy to restrict. Also, I see basically, what, what capability the plugin support it depends upon that. We okay. can do it, but it will also require some work to do that to restrict that also. Yeah, I think it's choosing between the less of the two evils. I will defer to you. You're closer to the implementation. You have a point. So yeah. Yep. Cool then, yeah. If we agree, then we can move to the next one. Uh, ye Shive, any call out that it should be part of uh, RC1 scope? Uh, the most effort for this one is the spec. Uh, the implementation should, should be easy. Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Uh, who will update the spec? I think we can take that to update the spec. You can assign it to me or Vani to update the spec. Okay. Pratish, the last one is the timeout. Uh, this yes, is the that's an interesting one. <laughs> So initially, I suggested that we should use the on. We should we should restrict the number of signatures we verify, and like I had some discussions internally with other engineers out there, and the suggestion was like, why do you want to restrict on number of signatures? Why not just use timeout? Because timeout is the most common lingo used in the tech world. You have timeout for almost everything, even case in OPA gatekeeper. You have it like gatekeeper uses seven seconds timeout. It's the timeout which matters to end customer, not how many signatures you restrict on. So yes, the suggestion was that we can have a default timeout of let's say four to five seconds, whatever we decide there, and let allow customers to let's allow users to customize that if they want to. Instead of instead of resting on number of signatures. We can just we can have a timeout value. And I think Shiva had some comments on that. I haven't read uh, through that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so basically, uh, if we use timeout, then it's uh, it got some issues uh, because of the network or the CPU. Uh, the the entire verification process can be very uh, long. And uh, for some devices, uh, it might not be able to verify a single signature, so it will always fail. Yeah, so in that case, user should configure a override default value to some scene values. Think about a scenario, like if it's taking too long, I can still DDoS you. That means, okay, it's actually hard. Maybe it's hard to, uh, hard for the cu customers to configure it for each device. 
not HDY, it should be a same default value thinking like how any service defines their timeout or how many, how any clients defines their own timeout. Or yes, I agree, it depends upon the CPU, it depends upon the network network bandwidth and multiple things. But for end user, let's say if a verification is taking more than five seconds, I just want to abandon that verification, right? Or 10 it seconds because... It, if it sticks to even if it's 50 signatures, if it's taking one hour for me to verify the signature, most probably I would want to abandon that process. But uh, I have a question, Ritesh. If it is timing out and if you abandon based on the timer, what's the error that's going to come for the user? We can the non, non zero exit code that process timed out after this my seconds. We normally see session timeouts and other things, right? Now it's the server uh, where the actual logic. No, it's client. Didn't... It's client. We are saying notation will time out. Server can still work. We said after five seconds, we will stop verifying any more signatures or let's. And this would be configurable value. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always configurable. Uh, so. Uh, even now we can use timeout by just uh, having a, a timeout context. Yes, but did we, did we did talk, yeah, yeah, but we don't do that. We don't honor that value, right? Timeout context. We, we do actually. Do we check that it's been more than like five seconds we want to timeout there? Or we, do uh, we the, support the, the that? Caller, uh, we support that, but the, uh, caller should uh, 